very few murders are committed by women. But when they do turn to violence, it can be for a variety of motives, including profit and gain. In 1923, a couple argued furiously in the dining room of London's exclusive Savoy Hotel. A few hours later, gunshots were heard from their suite. French-born Marguerite Farmy had had enough of her cruel treatment at the hands of her husband, a wealthy Egyptian prince. Arriving at the scene, Scotland Yard's Alfred Gross arrested Madame Farmy and charged her with murdering her husband. Farmy was defended by Sir Edward Marshall Hall, one of the country's top barristers. The court heard that her husband, Prince Ali Carmel Farmy Bey, had abused her throughout their seven-month marriage. The jury regarded her action as wholly justified and acquitted her. Madame Farmy returned to Paris, where she died in 1971. Infamous Murders now examines three more deadly ladies. The first led a notoriously ruthless gang of bank robbers and kidnappers before she herself was cut down in a police shootout. The second poisoned five people in North Carolina, one of whom was her own mother. And the third stunned the American nation when she and her accomplice brutally murdered a man and a woman with a pickaxe. In January 1939, Arthur Barker was serving a life sentence in Alcatraz. Situated on a bleak island in San Francisco Bay, Alcatraz was surrounded by treacherous swirling waters, making it virtually escape-proof. But Barker, also known as Doc, decided to make a break for freedom. Together with four other prisoners, he slipped out of his cell undetected. But as the fugitive scrambled down the rocky shore to the water's edge, they were spotted. The prison guards immediately opened fire. Barker was hit in the head and leg. The others surrendered. The following day, Barker died. Arthur Barker had been a member of a violent gang which had robbed and murdered its way across the United States for 20 years. The gang included his three brothers and was headed by his mother Kate, better known as Ma Barker. Operating from a remote farmhouse in Missouri, Ma was the brains behind the organization. Between 1931 and 1933, the Barker Gang targeted dozens of banks across the American Midwest, stealing more than half a million dollars and mercilessly gunning down anyone who got in their way. Occasionally, a gang member would be caught, but they always managed to escape from the small town jails in which they were held. A $5,000 reward was soon being offered for their capture. Ma Barker was born in 1872. Married to an unemployed and penniless alcoholic drifter, she had four sons whom she struggled to keep clothed and fed. Always an admirer of lawlessness, she sympathized when the ruthless Dalton gang was killed while robbing a bank in 1892. Ma's sons grew up in the company of hardened criminals, many of whom she sheltered when they came out of jail. 
By 1922, her two youngest sons, Fred and Arthur, were serving long sentences for armed robbery. Their elder brother, Lloyd, was also doing time for wounding a guard during a post office raid. In 1916, Herman, the only Barker boy still free, shot and killed himself rather than be taken alive when he was cornered during a robbery. In March 1931, Fred was released on parole together with his lover, Alvin Carpis. The next two years were spent robbing and murdering their way across the Midwest. Violence had become their way of life. They would stop at nothing as they looted one bank after another. In October 1932, Arthur was also paroled and went straight back to a life of crime. In June the following year, the Barker gang turned its hand to kidnapping. Its first victim was William Hahn, the wealthy owner of a brewing company. Ham was snatched as he walked home from the brewery. The next day, his family received a ransom demand for $100,000. They paid up, leaving the money by the roadside as instructed. A few hours later, a blindfolded ham was dumped unharmed outside a farmhouse. The owners contacted the police. The story of Ham's safe recovery became a national sensation. Kidnapping was obviously a quick and easy way of making good money. The gang's next victim was Edward Bramer, chairman of a bank. Bramer was ambushed in his car as he left home to take his young daughter to school. The gang then contacted Bramer's family, saying he'd be killed unless $200,000 was paid for his release. Again, the money was left by the side of the road. Once he was free, Bremer, who had been held for three weeks, was able to give the police a good description of his captors. The heat was on. Ma and the rest of the gang fled to Chicago, where they split up, agreeing to meet later. But Arthur was soon arrested, and police found a map on him, giving the location of his mother's new hideout in Florida. On the 16th of January, 1935, heavily armed FBI agents surrounded a remote house. A fierce gunfight ensued, lasting nearly an hour. Ma Barker and her son Fred were killed. Their bullet-riddled bodies were put on public display. The bloody reign of one of America's deadliest ladies had come to an end. Nearly 50 years later, a grandmother sat knitting in her prison cell waiting to hear whether or not she would become the first woman in the United States to be executed by lethal injection. In December 1978, 45-year-old Velma Barfield was found guilty of murdering her fiancé by poisoning him with arsenic. She was sentenced to death. Not long after, she confessed to killing four other people in the same way. One of them was her own mother. Barfield had murdered to conceal forgery and fraud. At the time, no one suspected her. She even attended her victims' funerals. Born in 1932 in North Carolina, Velma Barfield was the second oldest of nine children. Brought up on an isolated farm, she yearned for freedom and excitement. At 17, she married Thomas Burke. In 1969, he died when a carelessly discarded cigarette set fire to his bedding. It was thought to have been an accident. But could Burke have been Barfield's first victim? 
Two years later, she married again to Jennings Barfield. He was dead within just six months of the wedding. In 1974, she forged her mother's name on a loan application, but not before administering her mother, Lily, a dose of insecticide. Barfield was by now addicted to prescription drugs. In February 1977, 84-year-old Dolly Edwards died from a mysterious illness. Her live-in house help was Velma Barfield. Barfield then moved in with 80-year-old John Lee, who died mysteriously in June. His relatives were stunned by his sudden death. Next to die, in February 1978, was Stuart Taylor, Barfield's third husband-to-be. A post-mortem revealed arsenic in his body, 